Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, oh, sorry, let me just, just close this one first. Can you hear me? Is this uh, microphone working? Oh, it's working. Okay, okay. Uh, so first, uh, I would like to say that is the uh, I cannot connect to the internet, so maybe some demos is not working on my computer. But if you have computer, you can connect, so you can see that there are some demos uh, going on. So my topic is that uh, the browser front end plus Erlang back end means web apps anywhere. So let me first see. Uh, browser is actually evolving into what? Into an OS abstraction layer. Uh, so first one is that the normal HTML plus CSS is good enough to bring up a complex GUI app. Uh, actually, HTML5 adds a lot more new features into that. For example, you have canvas. You have WebGL, local storage, WebSocket, audio, video, many, many new things going on. So uh, talking about the complex GUI, let me show you some uh, uh, quick demo here. There you go. If you look at that one, this is actually our IDE. It's uh, working totally complete inside the browser. You can see that it's the two box. Uh, you can trim it down. You can do the drag and drop. So it's doing a lot of uh, complex things. You can see here, all kinds. And we also see this one. Uh, let me see. Okay. You can also have some this chart. Where is it? No. The, the resolution is not, uh, not, not, not very thick. So that's uh, some uh, ideas about what the complex IDE here is meaning. So in our opinion, of course, is that So why do we think that the abstraction layer is important? Because now we can see that first one is that JavaScript engine is fast enough. So you can run complex logic locally. And we can also manipulate the device hardware through JavaScript API. And all those things are highly standardized. So it's smoothly run across browsers, OS platforms, devices. Just like you just developed once, then it runs anywhere. So that's our way of looking at how actually we should build a web app. Uh, HTML5 plus CSS plus JavaScript. Now we have a completely rich client application. So all the necessary program logics are implemented in client JavaScript. So it runs, runs completely inside the browser instead of some kind of server interference. And all the GUI changes means that if you uh, change something, for example, if the user click on some buttons, so it needs to change the UI accordingly, those uh, changes are completely implemented in the client JavaScript. And all device hardware manipulation actually can also be implemented in JavaScript. So this one actually is quite interesting because uh, this will actually lead to the next one is that we can now have a completely client app that can act as a native app. Native app means that you say you, you use the Objective-C or C++ to implement and it runs directly inside the, 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 the hardware. But we actually can have some uh, web app that runs inside the browser, but it can do everything from, you know, uh, manipulating, say, a beep, uh, or shake the phone, or even get the lo lo locality, uh, these things. So what do we lack here if we, say, implement the whole things inside the client? Of course, is that the server-side logic that you can see some here, and the data. So. This is uh, what, what actually we are proposing is that we write the code like that one. It's JavaScript, but it's not running in the client side. Instead, it's running in the server side. Okay. Uh, so let me show you some demos first, this one. Okay, so still, uh, 
here. Oh, if you have uh, if you have the the link, you can go directly to this one. So this actually is a, in, inspired by the the, the Alang solution guys. When you you know you finish the, the 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 talk, they will give you a cell phone, ask you to give some feedbacks. So we just think if we like to build this uh, web app, what what, shall, what what can we bring up? So that's a quick uh, crank out. Actually. Okay, so this one it's running, you know, inside a, uh, uh, this uh, laptop. But also this iPad, actually, when you go to this uh, URL, it come just look exactly the same. And if I click on here, of course, if you have anyone connect to this, because I cannot connect now, click on this one, it will change, right? You can you see it? here? Actually, if I connect this computer to the the network, actually this one. Yeah, yeah, if you go there, it's public available. Oh. Yeah. So if I click on here, actually this one will be updated synchronously because we are using WebSocket here to, to send the messages. So this is actually a crank out uh, to show what uh, web app can be done by using our platform. So it, of course this uh, may, you know, it's uh, funnier, these pictures are funnier, or all, all the, the Erlang solution guys are funnier, it depends on on your opinion, right? But it works here, so. Okay, so uh, maybe, so if I click on this one, you can see that it uh, automatically synchronized. So if I click on this one, actually it will automatically, if you have uh, the laptop connect to this URL, actually you all can get the same result. So anyone click on to vote, of course, we keep, 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 right? <laughs> we can make it keep complete. We can complete. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's the the. Okay. Yeah, I will switch that. Uh. I think it's okay. It's okay. So. So just you may wonder how actually how this uh, web app has been uh, implemented. I will show you uh, how 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 this web app can be implemented using our web platform. First one, if you go to the uh, this one, the, the qiapp.com, and we have a project management going on here. We just new a few uh, new uh, new project. Click on this one. It has some templates for you to pick up. Say the desktop actually we show is that uh, is uh, using the whole uh, web browser as uh, the, the desktop, and we have some dialog or we have uh, multi language, uh, many RPC or some web socket. This or the project template you are connect, uh, you are selecting from. So this one is the feedbacks. It's actually this project. If you build it and deploy it, it will run exactly as this one. So let me show you what, what the main code that implement this thing. Ah. Oh. Oh, so let me see here. First one is that uh, we have uh, proposed some uh, kind of uh, functions connected to the JavaScript. So for example, define namespace actually define the whole module. Define this project as a whole module, so they, it can actually be used as a single unit. Define class, of course, we add a class, this kind of class. So if you are familiar with C sharp or C plus sharp, this kind of uh, uh, class is the very similar in the syntax and semantics. So let me see this one. So first one with new uh, free uh, new layout, actually it's container. So for example, <coughs> this one, actually we have a semantic, so container one is inside, click. So this is our all the IntelliSense, so it, it tells you because this container is a layout. Okay. 
Okay. So first one, we, this editor is completely running inside the browser. And it's doing is the, not just the synthetic uh, analysis, but also the semantics. For example, this container, this dot container one is new, some layout. Now it knows that container one, this variable is holding actually uh, is a class that has this kind of uh, functions for its two parents, uh, pack widgets, do layout, something. So it's easily to, to, to write code, not even if you don't know, but just, just look at the IntelliSense so you can know what's expected and what is uh, provided to you. Look at this code. Say, container one, new three layout, pack, uh, left, left, right, and then new three buttons. These buttons actually is because we uh, need their click event. Set the image. Very, very, uh, you know, straightforward code here. So as some label is down, uh, is down uh, the, to show the numbers. After all these things is done, so this kind of uh, programming is first is very straightforward. You, you don't need to learn HTML. You don't need to learn CSS. You just learn JavaScript and you use the IntelliSense you can see directly what's expected. For example, I need the button here. I need the layout here. I need an image here. You just say it, like say, say uh, write, write this, the code. So after all this, and why do we pick this kind of style? Actually, we can pick the JSON. JSON says uh, it's a big, big uh, description about the whole layout. Because these kind of things can actually can be automatically generated by our IDE. Because it's very, you know, it's very, routine and very regular. So we can actually use IDE when you drag and drop a button inside that. We can automatically generate all those code for you. Look at that one. So now there may be two things missing. One is that when I click on something, I need to respond. We need to add the code to response. So it's here. Say the button click equals on click. Now if we look at the code here, this is the UM hooking up. The other is, of course, is that we still need to talk to the server side. I don't know what, what server it is, but I need to have a data storage so that I can store all the, the, the voting here. Well, so is there some uh, good or bad or so so. So these things, we need to have a database there. How can we do that? Well, just uh, first one, we have this one. If you look at that one, this is our DPS. So it shows that you don't need to know. Oh, what's the label? Oh, it's not. No, it's oh, it's not connected. Okay, so this one actually we have abstract the database layer is from you. So you don't need to know what kind of database we are providing. Maybe a very simple uh, database, maybe a complex one, maybe it's no SQL at all, maybe React, maybe anything else. But you don't need to know. All you need to know that I need is that it's called an object, it's feedback. And the structure of it is that, okay, I need the three numbers. One is the integer, it's these three numbers. After you're done, you did apply, then this, uh, this description will be sent to our backend. We will automatically generate the, the necessary things for you, maybe even optimize for you. you. You don't need to know. After that, okay, let me close this one. Now comes the part that since we have already uh, designed the data, or data storage, it's not database anymore because you don't, even a database may be no SQL at the set, maybe or just a, a, a file system or key value pair, nothing. But all you need to know is that you have some storage inside the cloud. You now need to connect to it. How? Now here comes the part is that you can write RPC code Oh, so, of course, this one is still actually critical because it's cranked out. Actually, we have an ORM mapping layer. So, my DB dot tables dot uh, select where, 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 some, something. So, it's like a link or the Ruby's uh, active record. So, you don't need to write SQL anymore. It, it's not even SQL underneath. You just need to know that you save some data in it. You can update it. You can get it. So, you, if you write code like that one, say uh, get result here, 
my BBS code, so it gets returned. After you write this code, it looks like it's a source script code, but actually it's not, not running in the client side, but inside the Java, uh, sorry, inside the server side. So this JavaScript code will be compiled, will be first uh, passed by our parser, and then compiled into the Erlang modules. It will run inside the server. So look at that one. If you write those things, we actually have auto-generated, oh, can I open this one? Okay, I can open. If you generate uh, several functions for you to call, so the only way you need to call is like here. So you call the namespace here, call the remote, call the get result. This one will do the trick is that this remote get result will directly call into this function. This call function. Okay, so and the other one is that increment because we have some kind of, say, increment here. This is a function, it's the RPC function. This function body will be run inside the server. But here, when this function will be called, this, this one, this one, INC, because button one is a great, so we will increment great. It's all the same thing going on here. So maybe some code to show what the web socket going on here. Oh, I didn't open it. <laughs> okay, so uh, but you, you get the idea. So okay, let's move on. So if there's any questions, just just ask, just ask me. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, for example, this code actually, when you are writing this code, right? So actually, it's first it's saved into the local storage, oh. so you can offline write the code, and then if you connect it, it will try to automatically sync sync with the 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 the, the, the server. And also, this one, uh, why why we sync a project here is the the unit because we actually do a lot more behind the scenes. First one. We will do the parallel downloading for all the project. If you need, you say you, if you use this, uh, you use this web app. This web app depends on other project. Say if there's, there's, there's a window going on, say the, this one. You click on this one. This is a, actually the DBS is a quite a complicated thing. So it depends on another one. So if you parallel download all the JavaScript and CSS files for all those project uh, dependency, parallel download it. Uh, save it in the local storage. So the next time, only when the, the dependent uh, project has uh, updates, will these files be downloaded. Otherwise, it will just go on, just worked. So local storage actually is a quite important uh, role here is because it first, it actually greatly reduce all the network bandwidth because you no, don't need to download the, the, the same library a, 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 a anymore. The second one is that if you offline writing the code, you can actually save it, and then when you connect to the network again, it will automatically sync. Of course, it's quite complicated because in the meantime, you may also be changed by others, so you need uh, some, some short, short out here. Okay, so uh, any question? Okay, so, so this basically is the idea. So you can see that the project management actually is also a web app. You know, see, you can see a lot. We have uh, almost, uh, yeah, so basically, so this is our way of uh, doing the, the, the web apps. So let's move on to that. So once we have uh, figured out uh, how we do the front end, say the UI part, the, the, the connection to the server side. So actually we need a powerful backend. 
So first one, of course, the, as a web server to serve the HTML, JavaScript, CSS file. But we also say provide a data service to the client web. So basically, the client web will just ask the server side for the data. Although the server side may run some, uh, may run some uh, server side logic code before that. But from the client side of view is that I call something, I get something data back, and then I update the UI accordingly. So that's basically what, what our view of that. It, it looks like a little bit like uh, Joe uh, talked uh, uh, this morning, is that the client server is a connection here. So from our point of view is that we uh, made a very clear cut, say it's not like PHP because it's uh, mixing the server side, uh, the, 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 the code, and then it will uh, generate HTML and then send it back. We are not doing that when from our point of view is that uh, the client is a client. When it needs data or needs something, it calls out directly to the server, get it back, do the logic itself. So the server is no longer doing any uh, HTML generation or something like that. It only provides is the server side logic running and then send back the data. The client will decide what to do next. So we need a powerful backend, of course, is run the server side logic, provide data service. Of course, it needs a highly secured, isolate for each client app, not just for each client app, it's actually for each user to this client app. And we need, of course, it's massively concurrent because you know if a uh, lot of uh, apps going on and each app will has a lot of concurrent user here. So if it's a platform, actually it's a need a massively concurrent. So here is a, co uh, is a diagram, so that shows a little bit uh, more clearly. So the powerful backend, do a lot of these things, serve the data, and then serve the HTML uh, CSS file. This is the static, it's not uh, auto-generated. So can we, all do, can we do all this? Of course, because uh, we are in the Erlang factory, so we are, we are not talking about Erlang to the rescue. So, First one is that we have a very mature web server implementation, so it's a yours. Uh, actually, it's uh, quite, quite, com uh, quite mature. Yeah. We implement quite a lot of uh, the, the, the features inside. Uh, maybe there's some alternative, say it's a cowboy, I know it is, uh, it's merging, so we may have uh, to, to, to look, look at that as well, but so far, yours is really doing a good job here. So Erlang is inherent concurrent, of course, uh, strong isolations between process. That's also its ideal and network protocol implementation and plus OTP behavior architecture. So Ella has all those good things. So that's why we can crank out this, uh, this platform in such a short time and it's not uh, really, uh, you know, too many people was working on it. So it also, it's great thing is that Ella has built in lexical and synthetical puzzle. Well, that's really, a very big win, especially when we try to, uh, you know, compile the JavaScript into uh, some modules that can run directly inside the Erlang VM. That this is a big win. We, we don't need to rely on some, you know, third-party uh, uh, code or, or some some other other some code that we need to maintain. We just use the lexical and syntactical parser from Erlang, so we can just pass any language. Currently, it's JavaScript. Actually, Erlang maybe Lua, maybe some other other kinds, maybe others. So, but the most important thing is, that I think that it's a highly mature language at runtime. So we actually uh, run into uh, very, very seldom uh, issues here. So it's battle tested maybe so for centuries. Of course, it's, uh, in computer ages, it's actually just like Joe says uh, this morning, is that wait 10 years, maybe wait. But that's 10 years actually is uh, like centuries in computers. So Erlang actually has a, goes a long way to uh, become a mature language for, for these kind of uh, uh, things. Okay, so now to sum up what kind of uh, code, uh, uh, things the, the Erlang backend is doing. A serve HTML, CSS, JavaScript files, that's for sure, because it's a web server. If you connect it to the URL, the first thing is that you get some, 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 some code file files back. Uh, also, we add the user identification security infrastructure inside, so we can run, uh, we, we, we can support different people, and different people have different projects. They are all going on uh, without you know, uh, any security issues here. And we also provide a server-side JavaScript compilation and execution. 
also it has a glue layer, so it just has the, the, the databases, uh, the file system, version control system, all those things are together, you know, seamlessly. And project management has many of those things, say the DPS is connecting to the database. The version control, just so that it's the version control, so we have, uh, you can completely almost do the version control through the web. So all our two chain actually is built on the web. You can just uh, run it from the any browser. And the most, of course, is from a programming point of view is that you can provide a remote procedure calls for client apps that you can call uh, server side to exchange web socket messages to manipulate database or to interact with backend file system. This is the RPC code. Uh, but since I cannot connect to the web, I will show you a little bit here. So basically, if you open this one, you will have a QI remote here. If you click on that one, say, all those things, say create project, create guest, all those things actually, whenever you call this one, if you directly go into the servers and then to, to, to do the things there. So uh, this morning, some guys asking is, the, is there any web UI so that you can wrap some uh, the Erlang information so that to, to show in the web. If you using this one actually is quite simple because you call out, get some data back, use the, this uh, library, the, our, our UI, uh, the, 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 the widget. So it's easy to, to sum up, say, the web UI or, or something. So maybe that, that, that's our next step, is to look at if there's uh, any interesting here. So we may do that. OK, come back to here. OK, so uh, this one is the, uh, from our point of view, is that the browser front end plus LM back end. What's the runtime architecture? Is that uh, here? This is the code browser sends URL request to server. So the first one, of course, is send back just say the, the, the JavaScript code, HTML, CSS file. So, but the point is that all those things will be glued by the JavaScript. So the JavaScript, you call the server side functions. The backend will run the JavaScript and return the result. And then JavaScript will update the GUI with the result. And then JavaScript will send web socket messages. This is about the runtime architecture. Okay, so it's development time to just show that, so I, I, I'm not going to show it anymore. So just like uh, say you, you open a, a project management, new project, you can deploy, debug, all those things can be done. And whenever you deploy it out, anybody can just connect to the URL and run your web app. You can instantly see the, 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 the result going on. So now it's, it's, it looks like this is the old, this looks like it's the old presentation because we just add some important announcement here. Let me show you. Here. Yeah, here. Actually, we'd like to have this uh, opportunity to that because uh, just as I said, that we actually rely on Erlang because it's open source. It's uh, such a powerful system. And we also rely on yours, some kind of uh, open source uh, project. So actually, we are going to open source. Uh, front end and back end runtime. So you can have, uh, you can completely set up an environment to serve the web apps developed for our platform. So you can see what, uh, what kind of, say, define namespace, define class, what can, what, what, what actually is doing if you, you, you are interested in the JavaScript code. Uh, or you can see how, how we management this uh, project. So how can we use the Erlang to pack all those things into a single unit and then deploy it and run it, uh, the web socket all the, the, the things. So this is uh, what we are trying to do. Uh, but we need, may need some time to say, to clean up the code, so to, to attend some kind of uh, quality bar so before we crank it out. And comments on conferences are always welcome. Uh, so if you like, you can send an email to, to me so that if I, we, we think it's uh, ready, we will send out the announcement email so you can just go to maybe GitHub or, or other place to just get down the source code to, to, to play with that and then to maybe give some us co comments whether if something is doing uh, quite good, something is terribly wrong, maybe you just use the feedback, right? The feedback system. Click on the first, the, 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 the left leftmost picture, always click, click, because it's great, right? Okay, so the, a little bit, uh, maybe um, more technical down, down the road, maybe some insight. 
So backend is the workflow. What, what actually backend is trying to do? The first one is uh, when a get request arrive, we will check the user ID and according to the user ID, the, because there's some access control going on there. So if the this, uh, user is, uh, has the right to access this kind of this web file, we will serve the file. When a post request arrives, of course, post is the way we use this post, actually it's calling the RPC code. So we will check the user ID and we'll get the RPC parameters. So we support uh, both uh, BERT and JSON. So BERT, uh, you know, is the, 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 the Erlang external uh, term. The JSON, of course, is a, a very, very uh, you know, universal format. So according to the RPC, call, either call our built-in module, is that right directly by us, uh, maybe using Erlang, maybe using others, because we can compile it to the Erlang. Or user implemented modules. User implemented module actually we support currently support both JavaScript and Erlang. So call this RPC, we interact with uh, file system database, version control, send back web sockets, and then return result as uh, BERT or JSON. It depends on what, what, what the front end likes. So a little bit more about the server side there's JavaScript. So the first one is uh, Lexa and Parser are implemented and Erlang XRLYR tools. So, you know, you, you, you don't need to leave uh, Erlang's tool chain just to do, get all those things done. So it's quite amazing because this one actually, if you, I, I need to use the, 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 the Lex and Yak or something like that, it's uh, hard to maintain because it's another, another domain. But if we can do all these things in Erlang, so it would be quite great. This is uh, very consistent here. But there's uh, some bugs inside the, 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 the Lex actually. Uh, Maybe. So can I send you back report? Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, server-side JS will compile into other modules. So we, we have some built-in my DB, my file, RPC user, RPC global, this JavaScript object will provide all the functions we allow to run. Say my DB will have a wrapper, say why I'm just going on, actually will a lot more complicated than set because it will Auto generate a lot of code. Say the link you say, or the select from where, or, or to select these uh, synthetic things. But if you uh, generate some kind of uh, checking here, so you, you do the access control, the user control, all those things will be automatically uh, implemented. That's uh, another story. My file will uh, provide the interface for you to call into the. You don't need to know where, where the files are exist. You, all you know is that you call my file, open some file. It will open for you. You could save it, save it. Okay, so server side, we also will set some runtime checks, uh, ensure the security, the memory usage and storage usage and the monitoring for all those, if any uh, requests, any uh, customers writing some, some kind of uh, this uh, server side JavaScript, we need to ensure that it works properly and behave, behave itself. It's not doing any damage or any uh, security uh, threatening to other people. So really lightweight, of course it's really lightweight because actually it just allows process, just allows process. So it's very lightweight, so it can be massively concurrent. So, so this is the source side JS, just as I said, we also add the Erlang language support. So if you open the project, not just writing the server side in JavaScript, but instead in Erlang support, we can support that. Of course we need to do a lot of uh, Maybe it's some kind of the safe allow. So, so you cannot do any things that we don't allow you to do. For example, you cannot, uh, you cannot, uh, so this is the, 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 the flow is that the lecture will generate the token sequence, the preprocessor, do all the macros, we support macros actually. So uh, parser can generate abstract forms, then compile, and this is either source file or direct into the module, direct into a LR module. Of course, there's a lot of things need to be, you know, watched. For example, no new item items are generated because it's always running. Any customer can write any Erlang code here, so no new items are generated. All Erlang function calls are verified to ensure security checks. So, if we allowed it to do, say for example, if the file open file, we need to ensure the first thing is that the open file is an allowed function, and it can only be allowed on this part. So we we, we do all kinds of the checks to ensure that. It's actually safe. Uh, memory check, or, or of course, that's all in the function call. 
So actually, the interesting is that since we all compile, just uh, like uh, Joe says, that it's a middleman. Since we just compile any language, say JavaScript, Erlang script into you know Erlang, so you can talk directly. Say uh, you can uh, call the functions uh, written in the server side JavaScript from Erlang or from so south side JavaScript calling into functions uh, written in Erlang. That's an uh, interesting uh, phenomenon. Okay, so uh, any questions so far? Okay, good. Okay, so uh, more languages may be coming. So for example, we may, may interrupt us uh, LUI uh, to provide Lua support. This is mainly, I think it's for the web app game development because you know some kind of the uh, quite familiar with uh, Lua. So if we can add some Lua, both front end, back end. So, so why not use it, right, it's a game. As long as we can write a parser for a new language and transform its semantic into a la module, then we can support it. Of course, uh, the selected language can should be suitable for server-side programming. Say, is it, uh, actually, the JavaScript is not, we are not supporting the full-fledged JavaScript because, uh, you know, JavaScript has some kind of uh, uh, some kind of uh, weird mechanics or some kind of uh, syntactic versus so it's not suitable. So we may cut up the, just the subset. But this subset is uh, you know quite uh, large enough for the, the, the programmers to be comfortable to program it in. Okay, okay. So this is uh, most about the, 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 the backend, the language support. Now, we may like to talk about a little bit about Erlang because it's uh, actually, I think the uh, first one, what we like mo Erlang most actually is uh, pattern matching. Uh, pattern matching is really my brain. It's a uh, change our way of programming, or at least treat my way and some, some you know, some, some, some uh, quite a few of, of guys in my, in my team is actually pattern matching. You say, well, for example, if you were right in C or C++ or C sharp, you, you, you just say if else, if else, switch case. But in Erlang, you can just you know do the pattern matching, and well, you can just break it down into some cases. So this is really so very simple mechanism. So, so there's just you know in a, uh, on the eco side, match something according to their places. If it doesn't match, it fails. Very simple, but it's very powerful because you know unified, unified the whole whole thing so 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 easily. So it actually changed your way of thinking about programming. So we like it really a lot. Of course, it's uh, just as I said, Erlang is mature, uh, better tested. Almost all corner cases taken care of. For example, if you say one year or two year, actually it's quite interesting because first one, I don't know what this kind of things is actually using. But if I, we, we say we uh, uh, come into the situation, we run the, 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 our platform as a service, as so we, we just uh, run it and off it goes. We no longer touch it. But some Day, we may like to check whether we, there's anything going on there. So we, we can just use this one to connect it to, to, to the real system. Or we can connect to, to our, our, because our, our own production system is inside our company. We are actually using our own platform to build our own tools. So I can just connect to that, say we, we change some code. We can see if it really works. It just works. We, and you can just attach and then just go away. Go to the other uh, machine, connect it, just works. So this is really, really mature. Uh, also, uh, debug and hot code loading. And all features combined, actually, I think it's a, consists of a powerful system. I think it's a, it's a, just take, say, for example, Actum. Actum is a very simple, right? It's just if you are a small, a small, small, uh, it's, it's, uh, the, 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 it's beginning with a, a, a lower case, then it's an Actum. If it's uppercase, it's a variable. It's this uh, very simple mechanism, but actually, if you look at the code here, you look at the Erlang code, I immediately can tell what, what kind of these things. Actum has not, never been changed. Uh, I, I, before I, I switched to Erlang, actually I learned, uh, I, I, I'm most pro programming using C, C++, and also learned a little bit uh, Lisp. Lisp is that, it, it is a very flexible, but whenever I look at the code, I just can tell if this is a variable, or if this inside the code, if we just, Create it as a, you know, treat it as a constant. We cannot tell. So that's a lot of burden on my brain to, to, to pass the, the list code to tell exactly what it means. But if you look at the Erlang code, maybe it's not, not a case, but I can immediately tell this is an actum. 
okay, this is tag, we, so, so it needs to be just an atom, you don't touch it anymore, and it's atom. So everybody, every, every single place use it, it's an atom. So to sum up, it's the all features combined from Alan, so it's just a genius piece of work. Of course, it's my opinion, so, so maybe you have different opinions, right? <laughs> but uh, I think Kenneth, you have the same opinion, right? Genius work. Okay, uh, what we like around most also is the OTP behavior design. So we did, we use a lot of these uh, uh, design patterns, say the DB, the file cache, the RBC, all implemented in similar way. And all looks smoothly, there's no glitch. And we currently use ETS to host state, but uh, since I uh, listened to the Kenneth talk about the maps, I think maybe we switch back to the using the maps. Just there maybe uh, off the topic is that What's the difference? Well, what, what's the trade-off if you use the maps to hold the state instead of using the ETS? Is it because ETS is much high weight, heavier? So, and this one, uh, okay, we'll try, we'll try to proceed. Okay, well, maybe uh, it's, uh, what, what, what we want more, actually, you, you can always, you know, you, you ask for more. So, first one is uh, more powerful built-in logging. I think that's, uh, that's something that uh, we really like to have. A simpler tracing because uh, I, I know there's a, a lot of uh, tracing uh, mechanism going on, D-trace or something like that. But still, it's uh, I think uh, uh, it's quite uh, you know a lot of things to, to to learn before you can actually start tracing something. Maybe we, we just have uh, don't have enough time to do that. Uh, simpler performance measurement, of course. Uh, the yes, we have five minutes. Okay, so maybe I'll go a little bit. Uh, Building string type. This one actually. I, I, I just saw uh, this one actually is quite uh, useful. Local variables, maybe, you know, just a, just a wish, but I think it's uh, maybe we can mimic something. Okay, so we we'll go on. So what we built so far, just as you say, is that we have a site builder, click on that. Uh, so you can, uh, from here, you can build a beautiful site using the templates, drop, drop something. Project management, you already see that. Form builder here, so you can, yeah, this is building the data structure, so you can see, not just uh, say, for example, if I I want to here's a we cannot see customer report. We can say this is the name, if this is the address, I, uh, this is the uh, what, what 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 was the opinion about that? You can have this one, and you save it, and you can automatically generate the data storage for them, and you can also ensure that this one will directly when you get data, it will look like that. Uh, the IDE you already seen. So my DB as it says that the, the DB has version control, you already see that. Editor, you already see that. So we have another apps. This is uh, are the two chains. These are the apps actually we have built so far is the cool charts. This is uh, using the WebGL to build uh, many beautiful uh, charts according to the data. The team IS actually is a kind of a, a teamwork coordination. Say you have some a list, you assign them some tasks, you click on them, you add a you add uh, the who we assigned, who is due time, what's the checklist. You can have a lot of things going on. You can arrange it. It's like a whiteboard. Everybody inside the team, you see what's going on here. And you also send, send, say, send the message to them so to see if this task has been done. If not, it's due. Uh, what, 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 what kind of uh, situation is going on? So we also have ERP or Bint Cloud. Bint Cloud actually is uh, our BAS, is backend as a service. So just like that, you, you, you design the backend by using the drag and drop. Deploy it, you now have the data stored there. You don't need to uh, worry about anything else, just optimized. You just call out to get the data back. So, okay, so IDE just uh, saw that we just support uh, quite a lot of language, SQL or something. So it can do the cinematic, it's not synthetic, it's a cinematic uh, analysis. So the time you, you write a function, define class, you know what, what kind of properties it's having. So we can do the 
the pop-up to, to, to tell you what it is. Tmr has already so said, because just as that, uh, if you use our platform to build a web app, you can not just run inside the desktop, but also run side inside the iPad. If you have mobile, you can actually run smoothly, just almost not changing anything, but you can run almost across the platform. So, okay, so this is, uh, this one is actually uh, a little bit uh, uh, BAS. So this one actually is uh, the any arbitrary website built by using any, any uh, tools, say Dreamwheel or anything. Upload it, build a JSON, actually it's a storage is the bins, connect them together. So this one can immediately have data storage access uh, support. You don't need to know uh, how these things are uh, implemented, how it's doing access control because you all using uh, some GUI to, to, config, to config the things, say, uh, which one, which user group can access this one, organization, what's like, or this. Uh, so these things are all ge auto-generated. So if that you are a designer, it's, a web, it's mainly for the web, web designers. You design that, you add this one, you have data storage. You have uh, data storage beside. Leave some time for questions as well. Okay. Here. <laughs> okay, we like to hear from you. So any questions? Yeah, so far. Okay, uh, any questions? Support what? So non-Western characters, it was just an interface. I saw it in non-Western. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no. Oh. It just, just works smoothly, yeah. Maybe, no. I think it just works smoothly, yeah. Not easy to remember. Okay. So, like, I have one question. So, uh, this is, like, about security models. So, I mean, like, if so much happens on the client side, so where do you actually, like, store the security credentials? So how do you authenticate the request coming from the client? Okay, so, let's say we are uh, utilizing the cookie. The cookies, so every, yeah, just as, just uh, the normal HTTPS, uh, uh, the, 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 the mechanism. So the user kind of just logs in and like then you create a cookie on the server side and kind of. Yeah, it's create a server side and then paste back, yeah. Okay, so, okay, thank you.